shall be having a look at the game Test of Honor by Warlord Games. Now looking at the box, I really do love the sympathetic complexity of the style of artwork. The two samurai looking rather resplendent and a large amount of thought has gone into its design. Even the areas you would consider blank have been thought about and designed in such a way as to always add to the overall aesthetic. A very elegant design. Now looking at the back of the box, we started at the top. The Test of Honor, the Samurai Miniatures game. The Emperor is weak, challenged by the might of the Shogun. The clan lords align themselves with one side or the other, taking advantage of the turmoil to settle old grudges and seize new territory. Their loyal samurai, the consummate warriors trained in the art of the blade, must do their bidding without question. Test of Honor is a skirmish war game played with a force of between 5 and 20 models led by a samurai hero. During each bloody battle you will learn new skills and be tempted by the path of deceit and trickery, the ultimate Test of Honor. Now looking at the box here, we have 35 detailed miniatures, 10 Test of Honor combat dice, 10 special plastic multi-bases, I guess those are the ones there, 21 red faction recruitment cards, 21 blue faction recruitment cards, 6 injury cards, 10 dishonor cards, 23 skill cards, gaming markers and terrain markers, so you do actually get a small amount of terrain with this game as well. Now this game does carry a price tag of roughly £35, but I believe it is going to go up to £40 soon. So if you are looking at this game, get it soon. Now the box itself, all the usual gubbins and logos associated with the IP and manufacturer. We've got Warlord Games and War Games Factory. This specific product is aimed at 12 year olds and plus two to four players. Runs between 30 and an hour long and is not suitable for below three year olds. Opening the box. And moving the box to one side, we come across the old fashioned dreaded rule book. We have the main rules here. Looking rather lovely. And the battle guide, we shall have a look at those in a second. Now, coming out of the box, first of all, we have the terrain. Now, it's made of what feels to be 2mm cardstock. We have three buildings of varying designs and ilk, a couple of walls, and it is double-sided as well. So I do like the fact that it's basically doubling up on the amount of stuff you get there. That is very good. Now, moving on to the next sheet. Again on 2mm stock, we have varying hats of differing ilks and bloodstains and a number of chests that must contain some unspoken treasure of some kind. And also some more walls, making the total of walls up 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 walls. I wonder if those are double sided. They are indeed double sided. Ooh, and numbered as well. That is very, very useful. Oh my good god, look at how many sprues there. That is phenomenal. <laughs> that is absolutely smashing. Um, yeah, so it's a game that's going to need a little bit of prep work for it to begin. Oh, and I do believe that is the cat wanting something. Some time has passed. The cat has now been watered and hopefully will leave me alone. Considering it sprues, it can't be played out of the box. It needs a little bit of prep work. So we shall come to those in a minute. We do have some dice here, some custom dice with swords and crosses, and misses as well. I do like custom dice. It feels more engaging with the game. It brings a little bit more to it, I think. We also have some multi bases, which we're talking about. Like they do as it says on the tin. They can hold on to multiple characters. And a pack of cards. A samurai hero, five, five across the board with three at the end. I think we shall have a look at those later on. Now, 
Let's have a look at the battle guide. Battle 1. The first clash. This booklet contains a set of battle scenarios telling a tale of bitter clan rivalry, betrayal and revenge. The battles are designed to be played in order, forming an ongoing story with consequences for the victor and loser of each game. So avoid reading ahead. There may be a few surprises along the way. The instructions presented here walk you through playing your first game with just a handful of models on either side. The following battles use increasing numbers of warriors so you can assemble more miniatures as you go and add advanced rules for recruitment and use of skill cards. Assemble your first models. Each player needs the following models stuck on their own bases. The three spearmen are often then placed, not stuck, on a multi-base to form a group. So what is required? One samurai, three Ashigari soldiers armed with spears, and two Ashigari soldiers armed with bows. And your models will look even better painted. But that's not essential, especially for your first few games. So you can actually get away with doing your first game with... 10, 10 figures, 5 aside, so that's pretty good going in that regard actually. It means if, instead of, means if you get this game as a present, you could play a lot faster just by sticking 5 of them together, that's really good. You know what, considering, I think I might have to go and build some now. <laughs> Having constructed both sides start forces, it has become evidently clear that this was never intended to be an out-of-the-box plain 10-minute game, which is a crime. Now I realise that the spruce are of a grand quality and you can build and customise your armies the way that you would like, but investing four hours in constructing ten people, which on average nine pieces each, is too much for a young person to take especially if you want to play straight away. Possibly having the first five guards on each force as a three-part glue on the hands and click on the base kind of scenario would stop this from being left in a cupboard in favour of something quicker. Considering this was designed to be a fast play, ready to rock game, it also dropped the ball in combat, allowing far too many misses, which does become tiresome after a while. However, this does get better when blood counters start appearing in the game, and also sergeants and card effects do aid in this. This is grand, as it forces the player to construct his or her army in such a way as to be self-supporting. Now, what game do we actually have in our hands? 
we have a wonderfully colourful, engaging story and character-driven episodic masterpiece in the making. We are still pre-FAQ on the rulebook, which more than likely will rectify the confusions around some areas in that. So until that happens, I will leave it as... This game is a blockbuster and going to be great. It's a very young product, but when its creases are right out, will be marvellous. Four flaming schools with another red when the FAQ hits.